Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This time we're getting dirty as we venture off-road in the expedition-ready Isuzu Base Camp. We've also got the future of muscle cars, an electric Dodge concept car and the 2023 Toyota Corolla. Plus BMW's new X4 and we celebrate 20 years of the Audi RS6. That's all coming up, but first, the news. Dodge has announced that its range of muscle cars is to be discontinued in 2023. At the end of next year, production of the Charger and Challenger models will cease, with fuel prices and increasingly stringent emissions regulations blamed for the demise of the V8 gas guzzlers. While many manufacturers were downsizing engines and adding turbochargers for more efficient performance, Dodge resolutely gained more and more power from its models, squeezing its famous 6.2-litre Hellcat motor into Challengers, Chargers and even the Durango. To ensure the iconic V8 lineup goes out with a bang, a series of limited edition Buzz models will pay homage to classics like the Swinger, Coronet and Super B. Every Challenger and Charger built in 2023 will carry a commemorative Last Call plaque, while a series of iconic colours from the 60s and 70s models will make a comeback. The final car is expected to be an 840 horsepower Challenger Demon, but an electric replacement is on its way, and that's up next. With the sad news that Dodge, the last bastion of V8 muscle, is to retire its muscle car lineup, it's unveiled a concept car to replace them. It's called the Charger Daytona SRT, a throwback name from the late 60s, but that's all that's vintage with this new EV. Yep, it seems even muscle cars can't outrun the relentless charge of electrification. Like the outgoing Challenger, the Charger Daytona's styling is inspired by the V8 monsters of 50 years ago, but with plenty of modern detail. There's no doubting its aggressive presence, and like its namesake, it's been designed to be as slippery as possible, but not just for speed this time, for efficiency too. The three-pointed badge on the front is called a Fratzog, another throwback to the golden era of muscle cars, but we're struggling to see this as a modern equivalent. Power is sent to all four wheels and to really rub salt in the wound, there's a big speaker that pumps out imitation V8 noises as you drive. Sounds convincing. Dodge says it drives like a Dodge, looks like a Dodge and sounds like a Dodge. And if you fall for that, you can expect something resembling this in production form in 2024. Here in Europe, the cheap saloon car is all but extinct. Even slightly bigger cars like the Volkswagen Passat and Peugeot 508 and our rather rare sights on the roads with the majority of four-door cars being built by the likes of BMW and Mercedes. Instead, the hatchback is still the most popular type of car, continuing to fend off the SUV offensive. Over in the States though, the saloon, or rather sedan, is still popular. Cars like this, the 2023 Toyota Corolla. And while that name may be familiar, this isn't the same family hatchback that we get in Europe. Instead, the liftback has been replaced by a traditional bootlet. Recently redesigned following on from the new hatchback version, the Corolla has inherited some tech from the bigger Prius. As a result, the Corolla is finally offered with a hybrid powertrain, essential for keeping up with its rivals. Entry-level cars use a 1.8-litre four-cylinder and a rather noisy CVT gearbox for a total output of 139 horsepower. But while it won't win many drag races, the Corolla still offers a huge amount of bang for your buck 
as what it lacks in performance it more than makes up for in equipment. There are loads of different trim levels to choose from, but even the most basic cars get a mobile hotspot, touchscreen infotainment and Apple CarPlay. Although Android Auto is conspicuously absent, it does get Amazon Alexa though, helping you to keep your eyes on the road and not on the screen. Top trim levels get various other luxuries like leather and fancy audio systems, but all cars come with numerous bits of safety tech like lane keep assist and autonomous emergency braking. But despite being one of the world's best selling cars for years now, it doesn't have the market to itself, far from it. The latest Hyundai Elantra is another US market sedan with a fresh new look. The old model had little in the way of curb appeal, but the new car looks much more interesting. With its angular design and on-trend big grille, it certainly stands out against the more subdued Toyota. In fact, from any angle, it looks like a much more premium product, despite costing about the same as the Corolla, with a base price of a little over $20,000. Like the Toyota, the Elantra is now available as a hybrid with a 43 horsepower electric motor paired up to a 1.6 litre engine. The total output is identical to the Toyota's at 139 horsepower. The interior though is a little more upmarket with optional digital driver's displays and a minimalistic look. There are countless other choices in this class, but these two represent the best blend of practicality, style and value. But choosing between them is tricky. For us though, it's the Hyundai that just edges it thanks to its striking looks and modern interior. And while there's still only a very small market for cars like this in Europe, it's the Elantra that we'd most like to see make its way over here. After the break, two decades of practical performance as we look back on 20 years of the Audi RS6. Coming up, we look back on 20 years of the Audi RS6, but first... Earlier this year, we took the new Isuzu D-Max to the picturesque Yorkshire Dales, where it impressed us greatly both on and off the road. It was well equipped, well made and perfectly civilised for use as a family car as well as a commercial vehicle. It was good value for money too and an all-round sensible purchase. Now though, it seems Isuzu is tired of being sensible. In fact, they seem to have gone quite mad. This is the brilliantly bonkers Isuzu D-Max AT35 base camp, a pickup truck like no other. Based on the top spec D-Max V-Cross, the base camp is a one-off built to showcase the truck's overlanding potential. The first thing you'll notice is the enormous set of wheels with big, beefy mud tyres. These are available on the standard AT35 and are fitted by framed Icelandic off-road specialists, Arctic Trucks. The 17-inch alloys are shod with monstrous 35-inch BF Goodrich tyres that are all but guaranteed to get you through or over just about anything you can throw at it. Elsewhere on the truck, you'll find some LED light strips on the roof and in the grille, a bonnet protector, wind deflectors on the windows and a sturdy roof rack to carry various bits of expedition equipment. It's at the back though where things get really interesting. The aluminium hardtop houses an array of ARB goodies. There's an ice cool fridge freezer, some slide out drawers with storage and a full fold out kitchen. Seriously. There's a sink, a three-burner gas stove and space for all your utensils. 
La Pièce de Résistance is the fantastic iCampus SkyCamp Mini 3 roof tent. It goes up in a matter of seconds and comes complete with a mattress and even a world map. It's beautifully made, providing some comfort on long journeys across Central Asia or even at your local campsite. Driving the base camp is a real event. You sit high up above everyone, giving you the feeling that you're crossing continents, even on your way to the shops. At speed, there is some wind noise from the roof tent and those big off-road tires like to hum. But it isn't really too bad, especially when compared to less well-engineered home-built alternatives. The power steering is nice and light and the ride quality is greatly improved from the standard D-Max. The extra weight does make for steady progress and you find yourself rowing through the gears to make the most of the 162 bhp diesel engine. It is better suited to an auto allowing you to relax as you make the most of the kit that's included. Cruise control, a wireless phone charger and heated seats are included and there's a big bright infotainment screen with CarPlay and Android Auto. It also gets an array of safety tech, including lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring and automatic emergency braking. It is off the beaten track though, where the AT35 is most at home. With switchable four-wheel drive, a low-range box and a locking diff, you'll do well to get it stuck. With its extra ground clearance and those mammoth tyres, it is ready for any adventure. The base camp is, of course, a very silly vehicle. It's a bit of fun built to showcase the D-Max's potential. Even so, we love it. And it's a great reminder that even the standard truck is impressively capable. Are you concerned that there simply aren't enough coupe SUVs on the market in 2022? Well, worry not. BMW is back with a new X4, the svelte and stylish low-roofed version of the X3. Continuing the trend of recent BMW designs, the X4 has gotten much chunkier. The front end has a larger kidney grille and thinner headlights. Perhaps not one of the all-time great BMW designs, but we'll leave it to you to decide if it looks better than the X3. Following the coupe silhouette along the side of the car will reveal a rear end with the same issue as the front. Being so big, it's hard to adapt the smaller 4 Series styling cues to the SUV. That being said, it definitely looks more up-to-date than the previous iteration of the car. The flowing ducktail spoiler and thin tail lights would make for a good-looking car if it were carrying a bit less blubber. Inside, it looks like pretty much anything else from the current BMW lineup, and that's certainly no bad thing. More conservative than an equivalent Mercedes, its classic proportions and quality materials will appeal to any serial BMW owner. In the UK, you're limited to a mild hybrid diesel with either 187 or 282 brake horsepower. But for those that want to go fast, there is always this, the X4M competition. It's powered by the same 503 brake horsepower straight six as the old car, but it produces more torque. Remarkably, that's enough to get the X4M from 0 to 62 in just 3.8 seconds. However, this coupe SUV market is getting rather crowded and as such the X4 has some stiff competition to contend with, namely the Mercedes GLC Coupe and the Audi Q5 Sportback. 
with a larger boot fuel tank and second row headroom, the BMW claims the lead as the more practical of the three offerings. However, it is difficult to look past the x 4 styling, especially when Mercedes does such a better job of making an SUV look like a sleek saloon. The GLC though loses out on interior styling. It looks decidedly last gen compared with the classy X4 cabin, especially when compared to Merck's latest EVs. The Audi puts forward a better case. The styling is bang on while the interior blends sensible family car with tech filled luxury car perfectly. If you ask us, we prefer the regular versions of these cars, but if you simply must have a high riding coupe, it's the BMW or Audi for us. Cars or sleepers, whatever you call them, these seemingly normal looking cars with supercar performance are the perfect under the radar speed machines. And there are a few more iconic than the Audi RS6. With this year marking its 20th anniversary, we thought it was about time to celebrate the ultimate in practical performance. When the first generation car was launched in 2002, the idea of putting a big engine into a run-of-the-mill family car was nothing new. BMW and Mercedes have been building discreet fast saloons for years, and Audi itself had form with the original RS2 of 1994 and the RS4s that followed. The RS6, though, put Audi right up there with the BMW M5 and Mercedes E63, while a starring role in the film Layer Cake catapulted it into the public consciousness. To the untrained eye, it was just another A6, but to those in the know, the subtly swollen arches, big five-spoke alloys and iconic oval tailpipes marked it out as something very special indeed. Under the bonnet was a Cosworth-tuned 4.2-litre V8, pumping out 444 brake horsepower, more than you got in a Ferrari 360. Naturally, the chassis had been thoroughly reworked to handle the power, with its all-wheel drive system propelling the load-lugging estate car from 0 to 62 in 4.7 seconds. The second generation car came in 2008, four years after the A6 on which it was based. However, it was worth the wait, as well as the sophisticatedly muscular makeover with wider arches, enlarged intakes and bigger wheels, the C6 generation RS6 had a surprise under the bonnet. Gone was the V8 of the old car with a huge 5 litre V10 in its place. It was a flagship engine for a flagship car, producing more horsepower than the R8 supercar at 572 bhp. The enormous engine wasn't without its drawbacks though. It weighed almost 300 kilograms and gave the car a nose-heavy character. The noise and straight-line speed soon made up for it though, hitting 62 from rest in 4.3 seconds beating its other V10 rival, the E60 M5. This was also the last time the RS6 was available as a saloon, with the later generation cars only offered as Avance. Arguably the high point of the RS6 family came in 2013. The C7 generation car may have lost its sonorous V10, but the turbocharged 4-litre V8 that replaced it was the smallest and lightest engine yet. Power took a slight dip to 552, but with a 120 kg weight saving, the handling was much sweeter. It was still quick too. With lots of clever tech helping get all the power to the road, the RS6 managed the 0-62 sprint in just 3.9 seconds. This staggering performance was improved with the introduction of the performance pack, which shaved another two tenths with an extra 45 horsepower. These cars still look great, aggressive yet still just about understated enough to remain inconspicuous 
as you barrel along in the outside lane of the autobahn. The same can't quite be said for the current fourth gen car. Nowadays, the RS6 really likes to shout about its credentials. Just about every panel has been altered with just the front doors, roof and boot lid remaining from the standard A6. Power isn't quite as high as the old performance pack car at 592 bhp, but it's the quickest one yet, hitting 62 from rest in a barely believable 3.6 seconds. It's bold on the outside and exquisite in the cabin, with the latest array of Audi tech on board, making this surely the ultimate everyday car. Whichever one is your favorite, a saloon or a state, V8 or V10, the thrill of driving a big family car with as much power as a Ferrari never gets boring. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out a new luxury SUV that isn't German the Genesis GV80.